Today on Brilliance Business TV, we have Janetta Barry, founder of World Jenny's Day. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome to Brilliance Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. I am your host, Mark Stephen Pooler. We have a absolutely incredible guest today, Janetta Barry. And what a story, what a mission and what great inspiration for the world to see. We are streaming live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, we're also on the E360 TV network under Fresh Takes, going out to Apple TV, Fire TV, Android, Roku, and many more. We're also streaming through mspnewsglobal.com, and we're also on Business Innovators Radio Network. I just want to make an official shout out to our show sponsors, Dreamweaver Artist Ranch. Let's bring in our incredible guest, Janetta Barry. Janetta, welcome to Brilliance Business TV. Oh, Mark, thank you for having me. An honour and a pleasure to be here today. I'm honoured to have you as a guest, Janetta. Just share a little bit of your backstory because I know it's an interesting one for our audience to hear. Oh, thank you, Mark. Um, it really started way, way back when I was a, a sales motivational trainer and speaker, and I was pretty good at it. And I was, uh, people would go away all revved up and ready and uh, come back with these amazing sales. But what I noticed was that they were also coming back saying, we need another dose of Janetta or another fix. And I realized I had become their drug and that every time this happened, it was one step away, still not from being able to do it for themselves. And I felt out of integrity. So I took myself off for a little while and started uh, meditating and going into my intuition, for, actually for a long while, nearly seven years, working on the intuitive side of my life. Because after all, CEOs of major companies will tell you that their greatest uh, uh, decisions have come from their gut feeling. And again, I was coming to a point where I felt out of integrity again because people were in the perception that my intuition was more accurate than theirs. And of course, intuition isn't a closed society and for, for amazingly different people. We're all intuitive. Uh, and so I thought this is not working again. And it was about this time that I had my greatest life, life test happen to me. And it was one Monday where my 16-year-old daughter, Jenny, you can see her picture there, um, she, she was breaking all housekeeping rules, safekeeping rules. And um, I was putting those boundaries back into place when she and I escalated into an enormous argument. And she stormed out the house to her room to pack and leave. And after a while, I sensed something wasn't right. And I went to find her and I found her hanging in her shower, dead. And it was a huge, huge thing to, to have to deal with. I mean, my whole life went in that split second of finding her, went down to ground zero. And I even went through a point or three points where I could not work out what the value of staying on this planet really was. And I was crossing a road mindlessly one day. I call it my crossing over mo a moment. And I got halfway across that road. And I, a voice, my voice inside me said, you've forgotten you've got choice because the label I shrouded myself in was the mother who lost her daughter 
to suicide after an argument. And it felt like that was my lifetime prison sentence for forever. And it was a very deep, dark hole to be stuck in. And I just couldn't see ways out of it. I mean, what loving mother goes, okay, I'm over that now. And let's get on with life. And I am carried on mindlessly crossing the road, got to the other side, and then realized that I had tried many modalities and, and many therapies, and they were helpful, don't get me wrong, but there was always a missing, and that I would now spend my time researching and studying for accurate ways to get through my greatest life test. And I had to walk that walk and talk that talk. It was so, so hard and difficult. But at the same time, I was able to start reaching out to others and since then, I've created what's known as the epiphany process from what I had to work through. And I've helped people through terrorist attacks, um, teenagers self-harming, stuck in bed. They're, they're unable to uh, eat or sleep or, or, or wash, writing suicide notes and self-harming. They're now living fulfilled lives on purpose, doing exactly what they want to do in life. I've helped couples. I've, I've even helped children. Three brothers, actually, started with me under the age of 11, all autistic, and they've come on in leaps and bounds. It's just been such a special, special journey. And then a little while after Jen died, we realized she had died on the 10th of October, which happens to be World Mental Health Day. How's that for a synergy? And I knew, you know, synergies happen for a reason. So after some years, we decided to create World Jenny's Day. And that's why we're here today. It's a truly inspirational story. And I can only imagine how much courage and strength you had to have through those testing times. And Again, I, I use meditation as well, which is really, really important for connecting to that inner wisdom and just such an inspirational story how you're going round now with a mission to really help others, Janetta. It's really, truly inspirational. So just tell us a little bit about World Jenny's Day and why World Jenny's Day. Yeah, why World Jenny's Day? Um. A month after Jen died, my son Neil and I took her ashes to the south coast of Kenya because we're, we're from Kenya, although she didn't die in Kenya. And we were looking for ways to release her ashes and weren't sure what the best way was. And I knew we would be guided. And just before we left the coast, we got messages from her friends when I asked, did Jenny ever mention anything about if she was to ever die, what she would want to do? And these texts came back fast and furiously in the south coast of Mombasa at Sand Island, over the reef at Mombasa. We were getting all these going, we're here and we've got her ashes and this is it. And it was the most painful thing I have ever done in my life was letting go of that last part of Jenny. I mean, it still gets me here. But I remember standing at that reef edge saying something meaningful has to come out of this, something really, really meaningful. And I thought it would be a play or a film. I, I mostly thought a book and a film at that stage because it had to make a difference from having this senseless loss. She was such a bright little button in so many ways. And um, after a while, I started writing a book, which is now called Full Circle Rainbow, which, you know, science says energy can neither be created or destroyed. Uh, and it forms into new versions of itself. So where's my daughter's energy? And I started writing down when amazing things happened. Question them so I wasn't being fanciful. Check them out and, and wrote that book. So I thought, well, that's it. That's, that's, that's the meaningful happening from now on. I've done something meaningful. And then, of course, I started um, working the epiphany process more and more with other people. And I thought, okay, that's it, because I've helped so many people through so many different 
difficult circumstances. So that's that's the meaningful happening in the book and this. And then uh, one day I was in a theatrical production because I grew up in theatre and the recording industry. And um, I was in a theatrical production crossing the stage as they were striking the set and the stage crew were playing music and we got halfway, my friend and I got halfway across the stage and there was Jenny's music I hadn't heard in years playing one of her favorite songs. You might know it, My Immortal by Evanescence. She used to play it and play it. And we realized that it would be really meaningful to make that the base of a whole theatrical production on depression, suicide and solutions. And it was amazing. We used contemporary dance and voice and uh, um, visuals and voiceovers. It was amazing. And it was so successful that it was invited to be performed in Europe as well. And then lockdown happened. I think that's all our story. So I thought, okay, that's it. This, here's it. We're, we've done it. This was amazing. We want to franchise it worldwide and make a difference to those conversations. And then in 2020, the opportunity to launch World Jenny's Day came up. And this is really the ultimate, where the biggest legacy that's going to be bigger than ever me or Jenny, I, I think Jenny and I will be forgotten at the end of it all. Because World Jenny's Day is a series of happenings throughout the year, before the 10th of October, where we use fundraisers to also change people and their lives in, in amazing ways. And that's going to grow more and more. We've got a bike ride through Kenya, by way of example, happening in August through a game park cycling your bike. We did it last year and it was hugely successful. We got it again this year. Now I've had Colombia come to me and say, can we have one in Colombia? So we're looking at having bike rides all over the world so people can exercise for their mental health and raise funds for mental health as well. But the day itself is a celebration of mental health wellness. Because what I've noticed is that these mental health days, again, can be helpful, but a lot of what's put out in them has a lot to do with talking about broken people and how to fix them. And I believe we all feel challenged at some time or another in our lives. We all have those times where we go, what am I doing on this planet? It's a very human experience and part of being a human. And, and uh, uh, also that spiritual experience of being human because we're spiritual beings. And, um, and so uh, we just could feel it was morphing more and more, rather like live age, uh, in celebration, we celebrate on that day over 24 hours live streaming across the world using performing artists and artists because when everybody steps into their creative genius, either performing or watching performing performances, we naturally go into that state of being that enlightens us and puts us into a place of manageability and balance. So all these performing artists around the world are performing this 10th of October, streamlined um, online. And then from 6 till 10 this year, we're having a, a central London gala evening with celebrities, red carpet with celebrities, where we will carry on those uh, performances and streaming it and we'll be finishing at 10 o'clock at night on the 10th of the 10th and starting at 10 a.m on the 10th of the 10th in New Zealand and that is this year's World Jenny's Day. You really are making a difference in changing lives Jeanetta and just tell us a little bit about what happens at uh, World Jenny's Day. I know you touched on it there give us a little taste well uh we're still putting it together but uh by way of example last year we had uh children in the slums of nairobi in in a slum one of the world's biggest slums called kibera they were dancing hip-hop in such unison uh in a tin shack 
and that that has helped so many of them to keep off drugs and and prevent early teenage pregnancy and and mental health issues we had um street artists in la uh, paint along the streets of la world jenny's day and world mental health all there it was there for everybody to see then we crossed over to tokyo where the the top michael jackson impersonator joined us and and many other um celebrities in fact tokyo's asked to host world jenny's day in future because we're looking at at um new york next year tokyo the third year so um what happens is whether you're um, a singer, a dancer, a band, a choir, um, a magician, a comedian, whatever your performing art or art is, we, and wherever you are in the world, we will, um, and, and the standards there, it doesn't have to be professional, professional, but there is obviously a standard where it's evident your talent is amazing. We would love to have you represent World Jenny's Day that day and uh, celebrate mental health wellness with us. Now, people are asking me, so what happens to any profits with World Jenny's Day? Where does it take it from there? Apart from the day itself transforms people. Well, any profits from World Jenny's Day obviously will help future ones. But the big one that's really close to my heart and it's the reason why I never became professional in, in the performing arts, is that unless you make it big as a performing artist or artist, you normally are living hand to mouth for most of your life. That's a huge dedication to, to an industry and an art, huge. And so we want to use those funds and we're creating a global benevolent fund for performing artists and artists so that if they're in between gigs and they're hardly able to feed themselves, they can get some sort of bridging um, finances to in between what they're doing or if they're feeling mentally mental health challenged or ill there's there's a slush fund or even equally if not the most important when they come to retirement most of them live in abject poverty till they die so the very people who are there to lift people's spirits and enlighten them and put them into a zone where they speak from their truth and their light are the very people who get often most compromised. It's just absolutely incredible work that you're doing, Ginetta, and it must give you so much satisfaction. That's something that could have been so devastating for you. You've really turned it into the most positive, beautiful thing to support others. And I know you must still feel a lot of pain and a lot of missing of beautiful Jenny. And I know she's around you in spirit. Tell us a little bit about the legacy. Well, the legacy is that that will happen far beyond. I, I, I'm almost 65. So the legacy is that that will happen far beyond me, that it will morph and grow. I'm passionate about performing arts and the arts because I feel it generally is so marginalized by people. Sport and academics, fabulous, you know, everybody pours money in after it. And I see this leg legacy changing opinions and attitudes towards the performing arts actually turning everything on its head. A legacy like this has the potential, and I can feel it in my bones, for people to now understand on a global basis that our creativity, after all, we've been created by the creator. We're part of creation. So when we're in our creativity, we're in our true light. And when people can start honoring and putting good money where the arts are, that's when lives will change. That's when conversations change spontaneously without having to fix anybody. And that's the legacy I see 
way, way beyond me. Hundreds of, I see a three, four hundred year legacy there. And every morning I wake up going, wow, thank you, thank you, thank you for this opportunity to shift the world, for all of us to shift the world. I know you have a lot of fundraisers, what you're interested in uh, talking to our audience about, and also the world Jenny's Day too. So um, just share with our audience what you would like to share, Janetta. Oh, thank you, Mark. This is wonderful. Well, uh, one of the fair fundraisers that's coming up is this bike ride I, I mentioned earlier. So if you'd like to take part it's really you don't have to to ride the whole game park that's the nice thing is you decide how much you ride or you don't ride this year i'm not riding i rode last year but this year i'm not i'm going to 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 gently be there and for for everybody there rather than me on a bike uh doing whatever but you decide how many kilometers a day you do or don't want to do. And you have backup vehicles and um, really experienced guides. They've been doing this for 30 years. And imagine cycling through a game park and, you know, you've got uh, elephants and giraffe and zebra and all types of antelopes all around you as you're cycling through it's almost like you can go hello hello <laughs> oh, i know you and, yeah. and feel really at one with nature that nothing more can help your mental health with the exercise and that experience and it's over six days in lodges and camps and by signing up to do that and joining us we get uh, an amount, we actually get 500 pounds for each person that that cycles. So uh, that's one way, and, it, and it's great for the people who are participating. With us, joining us is one of World Jenny's Day's ambassadors. Her name is Karen Dark. She is a British gold Paralympian gold medalist for hand cycling. And uh, she's just finished cycling over Antarctica, actually, on a specially custom-made trike. She's the first person to ever cycle Antarctica, let alone a paraplegic. And they've adapted her bike for her to join us in Africa. And she's joining us with a team of other um, physically diversified people. They're coming with us. And uh, we're starting at the base of Kilimanjaro and going through to the north coast, um, north of Mombasa, north coast of Kenya, over six days. So that is one way you, you can support us. Another way is that Karen went, well, that's not enough. We're going to do even more. So she and this team of people are getting in a vehicle and going from Kenya through to Tanzania across the border, because not many people know that Kilimanjaro is right on the border of the two countries. Thereby hangs another amazing tale, another time. But she, she and they are getting there, and then she is cycling, and the others are climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, summiting it. She's cycling in the strike up Mount Kilimanjaro, and um, the, I mean, I believe one of the people joining her is almost blind. So they're all physically diversified. They're going up there. That we've got a film crew doing the Kenyan bike ride, and a film crew, the same film crew are going up Lee with her. And that film is going to be screened in London, Manchester, and Edinburgh in January to raise more funds for World Jenny's Day. And then, of course. Uh, um, and then we've put another uh, fundraiser there that, and it's all on our website. If uh, for every, because um, uh, Kilimanjaro is 19,340 feet high from sea level. So we've put a, a picture together with a uh, marking. So each thousand feet is a thousand pounds and we aim to raise 19,000 pounds, 19,340 pounds, then we've summited our goal on that fundraiser. And then of course, at the gala dinner itself, 
I, I, as we sit here, the tickets will cover our costs. So we're going to have um, many fundraisers within the gala evening, an, an auction. I don't know if anybody knows Derek Tomo Thompson. He is one of UK's top racehorse uh, presenters on TV. He's coming to do that for us and to MC the evening. We've got uh, Kev Orkian, who actually performed for um, King Charles's coronation a couple of weeks ago. He's also one of World Jenny's Day's ambassadors. He'll be performing. He's a great com comedian and singer. Um, and we'll be, we'll be fundraising throughout the night. In fact, we've got one amazing lady who's going to do amazing cutouts for people. It's just going to be, it, 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 you just cannot miss that evening. So there'll be fundraising there as well. And it's all on our website. I would encourage everyone to connect with Janetta. Go to Janetta at the epiphany process.com. That's Janetta at the epiphany process.com. Janetta at the epiphany process.com. Just share your website address as well, Janetta. Yes, it's uh, obviously www.worldjennysday.com. Worldjennysday.com. That's worldjennysday.com. Yes, that's J E N N Y S. Worldjennysday.com. Janetta, I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed having a conversation with you today. Thank you so much for being my guest and being such an inspiration to everyone that's listening out there. Mark, I, I just think the work you do is is outstanding. And to create platforms like this for for people who are wanting to make a difference and leave a legacy. Huge shout out to you too. Thank you for having us today. Me, us, really appreciate it. And just love your energy and what, what you do and what you represent. Thank you. The pleasure's been all mine, Janetta. Thank you once again. Thank you everyone for joining us for Brilliant Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. Until next time, bye for now.